Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, we're gonna be checking out a very affordable entry into the Seiko 5 series if you're looking for an automatic everyday style watch. These um, Seiko 5 series watches typically come in around the $300 Canadian price point, brand new, but of course there are deals to be had. This one is the reference number SRPD81, and it falls under the streets category of Seiko SKXs, or they were affectionately coined the 5KX series of watches because these revitalized 5 series Seikos came out immediately after the legendary SKX dive watch was discontinued. Now I haven't actually reviewed too many of these um, 5KX watches on my channel. At first, these type of watches in particular threw me off because it's still very reminiscent of an SKX. I mean, it's an SKX case and even the dial design is very similar. You have the same handset as an SKX as well as um, applied markers. And yet these 5KXs are not certified dive watches. Um, these are only rated to 100 meters of water resistant, non screw down crown, and other divers ISO features you'd expect are absent, like having a luminous pip on the dive style bezel, which is unidirectional. Um, it's actually got that Seiko springy muted feel to it, but the bezel action for the price point isn't too bad. And I do get pretty good alignment on top of that as well. Now in terms of case dimensions, um, if you can wear an SKX, you're going to feel right at home because it's a similar 42 and a half millimeter case diameter. Flipping to the side, uh, lug to lug between my thumbs is an even 46 millimeters. I like the fact that they do use drilled lug holes should you want to swap out the strap for different options later on. Total case height, I grab at 13.6 millimeters at the tallest point. That's from the very bottom of the screwed in case back that also has a display hardlex crystal for the movement. And then to, to the top of the flat hardlex crystal, which I don't think carries any anti-reflective treatment, but this particular color option is extremely legible and I'm a big fan. Now at the $300 price point, you could have opted for Sapphire, but honestly, I've never really had any issues scratching hardlex and it's more shatter resistant than Sapphire. Uh, the last dimension I like to mention is the lug opening is an even 22 millimeters should you want to swap out the strap. I should mention that the factory strap is like this NATO nylon fabric with blacked out hardware, but it does add a little bit of bulk because the nylon slides under the case back. So I just swapped it onto this uh, more dive style waffly strap, which is extremely comfortable and doesn't add any bulk to it. So in terms of the overall dial design, again, very reminiscent of a Seiko SKX, and that's not really a bad thing. It's very practical to have a day and day complication at the three o'clock position. And it's highly legible because the date disc is blacked out like the dial, and then you have white printing. There are some nice touches on this dial as well when you factor in the price point, like the fact that the Seiko logo at the 12 o'clock position is applied. The handset itself are silver, but they're very nicely brushed. And I really like the uh, blue color that they use to um, fill in the applied indices that have silver surrounds. And I would have thought that the, uh, the loom that Seiko used would have been blue for this particular colorway, but it's in fact, it's Seiko's standard green Luma bright, which is very bright and evenly applied. And I'll show you guys a low light shot now, just so you can see how legible this watch is in all lighting situations. And orientation is also very good because of the applied markers. You do have the uh, triangle at the 12, and then you have kind of more of um, elongated um, pill-shaped markers at the other cardinal six and nine o'clock positions. And then you just have your standard um, silver uh, circular surrounds for the other hour markers. Now the bezel is a dive style bezel with a 60 minute elapsed timing on it. And I really like the uh, blue color that they went with on the bezel. I do think it's an aluminum insert, but um, the bezel itself and the case also has a scratch resistant coating. I'm just going to assume it's PVD and it does do its job. Um, this watch, I do not baby. I can't really find any marks on it at all. 
even between the lugs when I've been swapping out straps, um, the lugs have not been marked up that much either. So whatever they're using for scratch resistant on this watch is pretty good for a more affordable entry into Seiko. So let's actually flip the watch over so you can see the see-through case back. And this is one area where Seiko upgraded their movement over the old 7S series movements in the SKX, which was non-hand winding and non-hackable. Here you have a 4R36, which is hacking hand wind um, pivots on 24 joules, gives you about 41 to 42 hours of power reserve. And even though they do have some fairly wide tolerances for daily deviation and timekeeping, I've always had good experiences with the 4R36 movements and usually my watches keep within single digits in timekeeping per day. This particular one anecdotally is only picking up plus five seconds. And here's a quick in-studio wrist shot just to show you how this SRPD81 sits on my seven and a half inch wrist. That's 19 centimeters in circumference if you're going with the metric measurements. And uh, you can see it's extremely comfortable, fairly compact with the shorter lugs. You do get a bit of wrist presence because uh, it is over 13 millimeters in thickness. But to me, I just love the look of this watch. It's a little more tactical and just a little bit more of a tool watch in my eyes. So that is my quick overview of this Seiko SRPD81. And I'm starting to become a fan of the um, 5KX catalog that Seiko is using because there are different color options and style options that will appeal to most watch enthusiasts that are out there. In terms of minor improvements, I mean, it would have been nice to have the 200 meters of water resistance, but you can actually take that as a plus or a minus because having the non-screw down crown also means that it's a lot quicker to um, top up the power reserve by manually winding it. You don't have to unthread the crown. With respect to this particular colorway, I would have just personally went with a blue BGW9 loom just to match the blue accents on the uh, dial and bezel, but it's still extremely legible. So again, that's kind of a nitpick. Now, if you're looking for a quick size comparison, um, I have my Damasco D sub here. This is a true 300 meter water resistant diver. Comes in with a case size of 43 millimeters. And you can see that the SKX, um, kind of plays within the same ballpark, although it's a lot shorter on the lug to lug and it's a lot lighter as well. But guys, at the end of the day, I always like to hear your feedback or thoughts about um, the watches I review. So what do you guys think about the Seiko 5KX models? And in particular, this particular one from the Street Series. Now, if you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. It does always help out. And as always, I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.